In this problem, we have a situation where we want to perform vector addition, ultimately. Uh, first, we'll calculate distance. But a drone flying horizontally, we're not going to worry about up and down motion, uh, flying horizontally, the drone travels 200 meters from the starting point at a direction of 35 degrees east of north. So that's vector A that I've put in here. The length of vector A is 200 meters. Then we're at this position. At this position, the operator causes the drone to travel 300 meters at a direction of 80 degrees east of north. So that's the angle here. And finally, we have a, uh, the last leg, 150 meters at an angle of 20 degrees west of south. Our first task is to calculate the distance. Distance is a scalar, so we do not need to worry about the angles. We just take the total distance, and that's 200 plus 300 plus 150. All those are meters, so our total distance is 650 meters. A more complicated problem is to define, to get the result of the displacement. I'll call this the resultant vector, R. And this displacement is from the starting point to the ending point directly in a straight line. The displacement is a straight line from the starting point to the ending point. Now, I've performed essentially by making this sketch vector addition in a graphical sense. It's an approximation. We'll do a better calculation in just a second. But if we take vector A and add vector B and then add vector C, we produce the resultant vector, vector R. I'll put little arrows on these to tell you they represent vectors. So we start vector A. Where vector A ends, we now draw vector B. Where vector B ends, we draw vector C. And I was approximate in uh, where the x and y axis was located for each of these vectors. I tried to keep things parallel. This line, I hope, is parallel to the north-south line over here, the original y axis. This line, I hope, is parallel to this north-south line as well. And we get an idea then of what we expect for the calculation. So if I would come up with an angle here for the result that's uh, 70 degrees, I would know I've done something incorrect. Either the graphical layout is incorrect or my calculation is incorrect. This, this angle is going to be a little over 10, 15 degrees. Uh, it's just a guess right now. But 70 degrees would be way up in this position. So. Uh, a quick sketch is worth your time so that you avoid making uh, some major error. All right, doing the calculation, we want to calculate the displacement. We want to come up with this vector r. We're going to do it for each component, the x component and the y component. And we're going to find r sub x is equal to a sub x plus b sub x plus c sub x. I have to have the same uh, component all the way across that equation. I cannot put any y components in this calculation, but rx um, will be thus. And similarly, I want to get the y component. And having those components, the ry will be here, and the rx will be here, that'll form legs of a right triangle, and we'll use uh, analysis of a right triangle to come up with the length of r and the angle for r. But continuing here, r sub y is a sub y plus b sub y plus c sub y. Well, obviously we need these numbers, the uh, x component of a, b, and c, and the y component of a, b, and c. This diagram will tend to get a little cluttered if I do all of the work up in this drawing, but I am going to lay things out for the a vector here. So if I come down here and I create a right triangle. This vertical side would be a sub y, and the side right here would be a sub x. Now I have 35 degrees outside of my triangle. I kind of prefer my angles to be inside the triangle. 
how would I come up with this angle, vector A down to this positive x-axis? If I know I have 35 degrees here, the right angle here between the east-west line and the north-south line, between the x-axis and the y-axis, that's 90 degrees. So 90 minus 35 would be 55 degrees. And uh, we're going to take advantage of that angle and calculate a sub x and a sub y now. So for a sub x, I need the length of the hypotenuse. Well, that's 200 meters. And to come up with the x component, I need to use the cosine function. The cosine function multiplied by the hypotenuse gives us the adjacent side to the angle. And that's what a sub x is. It's adjacent to the angle. So I need to use cosine of 55 degrees. And at some point here, you should stop the video and use your calculator and verify this is 114.7 meters because I might make a mistake. So you should verify this. And a sub y, now we're dealing with the side opposite the 55 degree angle. And to uh, calculate that, again we use the length of the a vector, 200 meters. That's a scribble. As I almost wrote 300 meters. The a vector length is 200 meters and then I multiply by the sine of 55 degrees and I came up with approximately 163.8. These are a little bit rounded. For the b vector, again I'll do just a little bit here but I'm not going to go all the way across. For the b vector, now I am dealing with inside the triangle 10 degrees and of course this continues on across here. Um, but 10 degrees is the angle I would use. And again, I'll use the cosine function to produce the value for the x component. Now the length is 300 meters. Vector b has a length of 300. The hypotenuse is 300 meters long. And the angle inside the triangle is 10 degrees. It's 80 degrees outside, so there's 10 degrees from the vector down to the x-axis. And multiplying those together, I came up with 295.4. For the y component, again, I use the sine function. So there's a length of 300 meters for the b vector. And sine of 10 degrees and 52.1 meters. Then for c sub x, C sub x is a little different, and I'm actually going to find it in two different ways. Uh, but first, I'd have you notice right here where C starts, if I call that the origin, and I put an x-axis across here, <coughs> mathematicians go in this sense for positive angles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the angle of C from the x-axis. That's really what I've done here. This is vector b is 10 degrees up from the x-axis. Vector a is 55 degrees up from the x-axis. What is the angle to vector c? Well, 0 degrees is on the x-axis. 90 would be straight north. 180, that would get us to the negative x-axis. 270 would come to the south direction. And we're 20 degrees short of that. So this is 250 degrees. And I'm going to do the sine and cosine calculation with 250 degrees. You'll see why that's an advantage here in, uh, in just a minute. So the length of the C vector is 150 meters. Cosine of 250 degrees. And again, you should check this on your calculator. Your calculator will have a negative on the display. When you use this full angle to the positive x-axis, or from the positive x-axis, and this correct mathematical, uh, where the positive angles are, they're counterclockwise, um, you will automatically get the correct plus or minus sign for the x component. In the same way, c sub y, 150 meters for the length of c, sine of 250 degrees 
And for C sub y, your calculator will tell you right around minus 141 meters. But the important thing I want to emphasize here is using this full angle, you automatically get the correct uh, plus or minus sign. If I was to set up vector C in its own triangle, I'll do that just uh, quickly down here. Um, vector C looks like this. length of 150 meters. Up here we have 20 degrees. And I could calculate the uh, C sub x and the C sub y. Again, x axis here, y axis up here. We're starting the drawing at the origin. Vector C uh, is down and to the left. So to calculate our value for C sub x, C sub x would be 150, the hypotenuse, sine of 20 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me, and if you do that, you'll come up with 51.3. What's wrong with 51.3 meters? Well, this C vector, its x component is to the left. The x component is to the left. It deserves to have a negative sign. So if you are creating your own triangle, you need to pay, pay close attention to your drawing and sometimes you will manually insert a minus sign. The CY, if we do that as well, 150, and put it up where you can see it, 150 for the length of the hypotenuse, cosine of 20 degrees, and we get a plus 141 on the display of your calculator. But this C sub Y is headed down. So we manually have to insert minus in front of that 141. So if you use the full angle, you'll always get the correct result, as long as you have the correct full angle. If you make your own drawing here, pay attention to it. If the x component heads to the left, you have to manually put a minus sign on your result. And if the y component heads down, you'll have to manually put a minus sign on the result of that calculation. All right, let's go for r sub x and r sub y. Well, I have to, for r sub x, add up these values, keeping track of the minus sign that's here. And I get 358.8 meters. Again, we're rounding a little bit. For the y component, r sub y, we add up the, the values of uh, a, y, b, y, and c, y. Again, there's a minus sign here. And I came up with, 74.9 meters for the, the y result. And now I'm going to create a, tri a triangle here for the r. And this is approximate. I'm making a little bigger angle than I should just so I can put the numbers on here easily. So 74.9 meters, that's the y result, and it's a positive. And the x result is 358.8 meters, that's a positive. We're trying to find the length of the resultant, the displacement. The length is the hypotenuse. And for a vector, displacement's a vector, we also need the angle. Well, if we have two sides of a right triangle, again, these are x and y components, so they're 90 degrees from each other. It is a right triangle. We use Pythagorean theorem, of course, to come up with a value for the length of r. So 358.8, that'll be squared, and then plus 74.9, also squared. And again, check this on your calculator. Do each square, add up the results, and then take a square root. Do not take a square root of this number, and then add to the square root of this number. You must do that addition before you try the uh, square root calculation. And I came up with 366 meters. For the angle, the tangent function, tangent of theta, would be the 74.9 over 358.8. Opposite divided by adjacent gives us the, uh, the tangent calculation. And I've canceled off the units of meters. Now, if you divide those two numbers, you find that you have 0 0.20875, something close to that. 
how do I determine the value of theta if I know the value of tangent of theta? Well, I have to apply inverse tangent to both sides. So I take inverse tangent, I apply inverse tangent function to the tangent function on the left, and I apply inverse tangent to the number that's on the right. I must do inverse tangent on both sides of this uh, calculation. So on the left side, when I take inverse tangent of tangent, these are inverse functions of each other, and I just come up with theta. You know, review your math for that uh, that fact. But tangent inverse tangent of the tangent function just gives us the argument of this inner function. So we get theta. And inverse tangent of 0 0.20875, I came up with 11.8 degrees. And that matches our drawing to some extent. Um, we have a small, relatively small angle here. The calculation is the exact result the, uh, to three, decimal, three significant figures, 11.8 degrees. We've determined the displacement is 366 meters with a uh, angle to the x-axis of 11.8 degrees. You'll notice here the displacement magnitude, 366, is smaller than the distance number, 650 meters. That's that will be the case unless all your vectors are in a straight line and all positive. Uh, so review this. Uh, ask your instructor if you have any uh, any questions on this. If you would like to view other uh, physics and astronomy lecture, short lectures and uh, and problems worked out, physics.gpclements.com for the physics and annotated list of my videos. There's no charge for using the site. You do not register for it. Don't give me your email address, etc. No money. And astronomy.gpclements for uh, mostly astronomy lectures. I'm starting to put on some videos from uh, interesting photos, Hubble telescope and other telescopes uh, being involved in that. So keep practicing and read your book and ask your instructor questions.